You get a good sized fire pit out of this. Stack some rocks around here. I like rocks. I'm so excited about this thing. Does not suck. No. This is it. What is up, everybody? Happy spring. It doesn't seem very spring-like, but nonetheless, spring it is. We're getting some snow today. That snow could turn over to rain. Might not. The weatherman is saying all kinds of different things, so who knows what it's going to do. What I can say for certain is that I've got a whole bunch of new gear that I'm really excited about and I want to show you guys, and it's a good time to do some camping. So let's do some camping. I'm out way at the back end of our property in an area that I've never camped before. Um, it's kind of boggy out here in the summertime, and I know that it's a really good area for deer. The deer like to bed out here. But this past hunting season, uh, I was sitting out here and scouting out an area, and I noticed this area and thought, wow, this would be really nice to camp out here. The woods are really nice out here, and there's a big rock that looks like it would make an awesome spot to have a fire right on top of it. It's nice and low, kind of flat. I'll show you guys that later. This could be the last opportunity this year that I have to camp out here because once this area starts thawing out, it gets pretty boggy. It's snowing out, I'm getting kind of wet. It's time to set up a tarp. One of my new pieces of gear that I'm excited about is for my tarps. This is a Dutch hardware continuous ridge line. There's a Dutch clip spliced onto one end of it. You wrap this end around a tree and the clip grabs the cordage. Run the line to your other tree, wrap the cordage around the tree, and from here... This is the wasp. And it can move freely up and down the ridge line very easily to get it to lock into place. Take a loop and wrap it around the tail and pull. Now it's locked into place. It's not going to go anywhere. So what we do from here is go around the tree with this end. Put the cordage in that hook like so and pull. It's creating mechanical advantage and it's getting this line very tight. Then what you do is wrap the cordage under that head around the wing, and there it is. Nice and tight, real easy. If you want, you can just loop it around again, just to back it up, and that's not going anywhere. Then attached to the ridge line is basically a pressic knot that you attach your tarp to. It's very easily movable, but as soon as you start pulling, it locks up. And the reason that I got that ridge line is because of this tarp. Brand new tarp, I haven't used it yet. This is my hammock gear, Dyneema Palace. It's 11 foot long by 10 feet, four inches wide with doors. And this tarp in the stuff sack right now as it sits is 10 ounces. So these shackles easily allow you to adjust the length of your tarp and where it's going to be located. And normally I would pitch my hammock first, but we've got some snow and a light drizzle. It's tapering off now, but I don't want my hammock to get wet because that's my lifeline. That's what keeps me warm. So, tarp first. Tarp is deployed. I've got shock cord on each tie out. S beaner. Down to the stake which is a branch. I do not have the doors open at the moment. 
there tucked back so that I can get my hammock up without that being in the way. All right, for my hammock, I have new straps. These are from Dutchware and they have the beetle buckles on them. Throughout my whole hammock journey, I've been tying knots using the Beckett hitch or the Marlin spike. And I just really like the idea of the quick adjustability that these beetle buckles offer. Some people say these are a surefire sign of noobs, and I'm fine with that. I'm still a rookie in my hammock camping journey, but I suspect that I'm going to like these. If I don't, at least I can say I've tried them, and I can always go back to the minimalist knot routine. We'll see. Looking forward to giving these a go. This will be my first time using them. So let's use them. And this is the hammock I'm using tonight. I always put the head end of my hammock in last so that that is the side that I set up first. And I always know where my head is gonna be. These beetle buckles, they just clip into your continuous loop like so. Adjustability is quite nice. I've got the doors deployed, protecting the hammock a bit. Time to start moving stuff in and getting it protected. I really like the doors. You don't always need them, but when you do, I'm glad to have them. You know, if I don't want them, I can just tuck them out of the way. That's one of the reasons that I went for a Dyneema tarp, was so that I could have the palace specifically. A lot of room, lightweight. Kind of sucks that it's not camo, but I'll deal with it. The camo one was an option that I'd have to wait a lot longer to get. It took me three weeks to get this as it was, and it also comes with a weight penalty. I paid a ton of money for Dyneema for weight savings alone. I don't really care about how it looks. I went after it because of weight savings. This tart saved me about 10 ounces from my Warbonnet Superfly. And truthfully, I'm not gonna use this tarp all the time. I'm pretty much only gonna use this tarp when I'm concerned about weight savings. Granted, today I am on my own property. I'm not hiking miles and miles and miles. I'm only half a mile from home. But I've had this thing for a couple weeks now and I've never used it and I've been dying to try it. And today was the opportunity. So here we are, I'm pumped. I'm so excited about this thing. I'm wearing my grandfather's old wool pants and I don't really want them to get wet so I'm going to be putting on some protection. I've had these things for like 15 years now. Nothing fancy but they work and I'm not afraid to beat the piss out of them. They weren't expensive so there's that. The advantages to this continuous ridge line is that the line goes over the tarp so no water starts going down your line and then underneath your tarp and dripping on you while you're in the tarp. Really lightweight. My buddy Craig recommended to me that I look into a continuous ridge line because there's not as much stress being put on the tarp as the trees, as, as trees, as the trees are blowing back and forth and I'm just scared to death that there will be too much tension put on the tarp as that's happening and blow my tarp in half. So that would suck bad. So I'm giving the continuous ridge line a go and we'll see how I like it. I like the idea of it. I like the hardware. It makes everything super, super simple. And it's lightweight, but I gotta get some, some experience with it. I gotta get a little bit of time under my belt, if you will. Dig it, you dig. Brought out a few beers, got them in the cooler. I am super pumped about this tarp and I've been battling and putting off buying one of these things for a long time. But every single day for about eight months, I've been thinking about one of these. And basically what I did is freed up the mental space. A lot of people would think that someone is insane for paying that much money for a tarp. I mean, this tarp alone is like $500. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. So I spent $500 to save 10 ounces. You know what they say, a fool and his money easily part ways. I'll drink to that. Cheers. Oh, 
PBR, red, white, and blue. America in a can. Yeah, that tastes good. My sleep system tonight is my Superior Gear hammock with a 30 degree integrated underquilt and my EMS Eastern Mountain Sports Mountain Light 20, 20 degree sleeping bag. And I've got my climate pillow with my fleece pillow cover. And that's it. That's what I'm rocking tonight. I do believe that a lightweight tarp is the key to unlocking ultralight hammocking. It's possible. A hammock system is not gonna be as light as the lightest tents out there. It's crazy. There's no way you're gonna get your hammock set up down to 14 ounces, but that's just the tent. Then you need your sleeping pad. And anyway, I'm not really trying to say that one is better than the other, but with a Dyneema tarp, we can get these hammock setups into the ultralight category, I believe. And honestly, the comfort of a hammock for me is worth a little bit of a weight penalty. Yep, sure is. And now I've freed up that mental space and I can stop thinking about it. I can start obsessing about something else. <laughs> like beer. No, bourbon. Beer. Bourbon. Bourbon. Cheers, my friends. Oh, it's delicious. This is fun. My winter was kind of lame. I didn't get to do much camping at all. Um, we're overwintering pigs and whatnot and doing some homesteading stuff. And it's just not fair for me to be gone playing in the mountains and to leave all those responsibilities and chores for my wife and daughter. Adulting, you know, it can be a real drag, man. It's six o'clock and I should start thinking about collecting some firewood. Light is going away quick. Which brings me to my next newish piece of gear, which is this right here, my silky saw. The big boy, um, 2000, yep, 2000, 360 millimeters. And I gotta say, this thing rips, it's, it's aggressive. It's a fun saw and now I need to go use it. Here's that rock I was telling you guys about. Pretty cool, kind of triangular, relatively flat. I think that's right in the way. Burn it. As I was saying, I think I'm just gonna build a really rustic fire pit right here. Once the snow melts, I'll come up here at some point stack up some stones as I find them in the woods because this is just a really neat natural spot to have a fire up above me is clear you get a good sized fire put out of this stack some rocks around here I like rocks Standing in the future fire location. And there's my setup right over there. That's the good stuff right there.
I know, I know. That could have that could have been disastrous for the blade if there was a rock under there. I have to be more careful. snowing out almost feels like rain at the fire got a nice spot for my feet there's not really any snowpack life is good This is nice. I like the idea of random fire pit in the woods. This is cool. It's cool to see something that you thought about months and months ago come to fruition. When I was out here hunting and stumbled across this rock, I just knew that I had to have a fire on it someday. This is great. Here's an upgrade that I've recently made as well. This is a Nightcore 10,000 milliamp battery pack. My old battery pack was a Blaver, Blaver, I'm not quite sure how to say it, but it was a 20,000 milliamp solar power battery pack and that solar charger is the only charger I've been using for years even on overnights and weekend trips I've been bringing that thing and it's heavy so for weekends and overnights this guy right here saves me 10 ounces now this combined with the Dyneema tarp that's 20 ounces it's almost 21 ounces and also while I'm thinking about it it's worth mentioning, in this nasty weather, to keep my phone dry and out of the elements when I'm not using it, I cover it with this Dyneema bag right here. It's the same Dyneema Hilltop Packs food bag that I use to put my boots in and put them in my sleeping bag to keep them from freezing, so it's multi-purpose. When I'm not using the camera, I'll just take this guy, and that keeps my phone safe, nice and dry. Out of the elements. Woo. And when it's kind of nasty out and I need to charge my phone, I have my phone protected in that bag right there. And it's connected to the charger, which is in that bag right there. Nice and protected, clipped right into the tripod. Both these bags are Dyneema. They weigh next to nothing. And you can get them at Hilltop Packs. Boom. going with a finely seasoned burger. Yes. It smells fantastic. To complement the burger, we have some cheddar cheese, tomato, and avocado. Dijon mustard. Yes. Now that I pretty much charred that side and put some cheese on it, I've moved it off to the side of the heat. I'm just gonna let it sit there and kind of smoke for a little while. While that's cooking, I'm gonna have me a little tomato and avocado taco. Little appetizer. It's delicious.
I accidentally ate all the tomatoes, so avocado is going to have to be. Now that the burger's done, I got to stoke the fire back up. All right, fire's stoked back up. Looks like I cut the perfect amount of firewood. That's it. Brought the perfect amount of beer, perfect amount of bourbon. It's good. Pretty excited about this. Not mustard and cheddar. Oh man, this does not suck. No. I love avocados. Oh man, that burger was fantastic. Very good. It's time to enjoy my last beverage and watch this fire burn down before I go to bed. Look at that. Snow covered. Oh yeah. Oh my God, that is fantastic. That burger may have been slightly overcooked but this is chilled to perfection. This is so good. Oh my, just right. Oh, this fire has burnt down to a pretty good bed of coals. It's not going anywhere. I would consider this a controlled and manageable state. It's 10.30, I'm going to bed. Oh, it feels good to lay down. Ah, oh, yes it does. I'm all situated. It's really starting to rain. I'm snug in my little cocoon. I have the boots in the bag. And I'm ready for bed. I'm tired. It's now 11 o'clock. I'm just going to listen to the pitter-patter of the rain hitting my tarp. This is nice. <laughs> See you in the morning. Ah. Quarter after seven, and I slept really well. It rained all night. Sounds like it's letting up now. What an awesome night. Now, one of the things that I really like about hammocks is the ability to sit here in the morning, nice and comfy, and put on my boots. the fire was right there that was a good fire last night pick that up before I forget it and normally I would take the hammock down first but I want to talk about the hammock a little bit before I pack up and leave. All right, last night, my zipper came off of my hammock. It's the second time this has happened to me. So let me show you what's going on. It's easy enough to fix, but it's still an inconvenience, especially at night when you're just crawling into bed and all you want to do is go to sleep and this happens when you gotta fix it. So, here's what's happening. At night, if you, your head's up there, you reach down here, you grab this, and if you pull this just a little bit too hard, boom, that comes off. And that sucks because it doesn't take very much pressure. It's the second time this happened to me. Here's how you fix it. You gotta break that. 
I don't know how well the camera will pick this up, but what you need to do is flap that little stopper out of the way. And then you take your zipper and thread it back on. Then you bring the zipper all the way back. And then you take the other part of the zipper, put it back in, and boom, we're back in business. This is a nice hammock. I like it a lot. It served me well. But we're moving on to the time of year now where this is probably the last time that I'm going to use it for the season until it starts to get cold again. This has a 30 degree integrated underquilt and my Warbonnet hammock setup, I have a 40 degree underquilt for it. So that system is lighter. In the warmer months, I'm not gonna want the 30 degree rating and, and this hammock's a little bit heavier as well. So what I'm gonna do is switch them out through the seasons. I have another underquilt for this thing on the way, which is really gonna drop that rating down. So this setup right here is going to be my winter cold weather setup. I was comfy last night. I didn't have any down pants. I had my down jacket on and I used my 20 degree bag. I unzipped it and used it like a quilt. And I was, I was fine. Nice and toasty. Slept like a champ. I got this almost a year ago and I used it all season, all through the summer on my canoe camping trips. And even once in the winter and now this. So, like I said earlier, I didn't get to do much winter adventuring this year, but next year. Woke up, didn't enjoy coffee or tea or nothing, and packed right up, and now I'm heading out of here. Busy day. I'm going to walk out of here, head home, and I'm heading straight to your mother's house. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate your support and I'll see you next time. Later. This is how every trip ends, right here. The gear bomb. Everything's hanging, being allowed to dry. Got a fan on it.